Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I don't know, must, uh, all of you must be tired after listening to all of us again and again and again. But I'm sorry you paid for it. <laughs> so you think you're not, you can't escape it. Um, but luckily, it's after lunch. That's when usually people drink coffee. Um, it's, it's been a very interesting subject for me as well as for a lot of other people before I got into coffee. So there's a funny thing why I actually get into coffee. Because he said I was studying in Paris for luxury management. And uh, because I was studying luxury management, I thought I'd stay in a fancy place in the middle of the city. And then I got done with it. And then the first week itself, is there something wrong with the sound? Oh, but that's, uh, that's my manufacturing defect. My volume is <laughs> pretty low, <laughs> unfortunately. But um, the point I was trying to say is that when I was staying there, the apartment was really expensive and I couldn't afford it. Uh, there was no way I could have asked my mom and dad for money as well. So my professor took me to a, a, a cafe. Uh, there's an interesting area called the Golden Triangle in Paris. Um, and that's actually an epicenter of a lot of things happening up and around coffee, uh, to a large extent. And uh, I got a job there. My, it was just for six weeks, so I was very fortunate that they even let me in to the other side of the bar. They actually call coffee bar, not the bar which you're thinking right now in, in Gujarat. In Gujarat, we think about bar and that's alcohol. But... That's where everything started for me, my, my one-sided love with coffee. And uh, that's what I was, I was thinking to, uh, I'd rather make a cup of coffee in front of you as well to find out. Because we have this misconception, being in India, or rather being in Gujarat, we're traditionally tea drinkers. So I don't even expect a lot of people to, to like a lot of coffee, because we're not supposed to be doing that way anyway. Having said that, India grows some really interesting coffees down south in India, uh, you know, in Kurgan, and Chikmangalur. Um, how, when, where, you know, it's essentially a fruit. I don't know if a lot of people know. You know, it's a cherry. Uh, when you pop it out, there's two sides. So, you know, when you see a half side of the brain, you know, it looks like a brain. So, half side of the spear of the skull, and then there's another half. They're all joined together inside the cherry. And uh, when you pop it out, there's these two coffee beans which come out of them. They're green in color. And ideally the best, I mean, there, there are quite hundred varieties of, of coffees. But the most prominent ones and, you know, most, uh, the ones which we even are familiar with is Arabica and Robusta. Uh, Arabica is one of the coffees which is um, slightly better in taste when it's grown on the higher altitudes. And Robusta, as the nam, name suggests itself, it's more robust in terms of uh, maintaining it. Arabica needs a little more care and maintenance. It's very susceptible to in 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 insects and other weather conditions which play around with it. And it is slightly lesser in caffeine as compared to Robusta. So Robusta essentially gives you a more traditional cup, you know, with the ones which... We've grown up drinking in a house, or rather our parents have grown up drinking. And it's, it's in these uh, packaged coffees which, you know, we see Nescafes and brews and so on and so forth. Nothing wrong with them. It's just that it's a very traditional cup. And, and it's, its innate nature is very bitter as compared to the Arabica ones. Arabica is more sweeter or more floral depending on where they're growing. And... The moment someone discovered coffee, you know, this back in the 9th century, is, you know, it's a very uh, interesting story where a farmer found his goats jumping around a tree. And, uh, you know, they were all excited, they were very energetic, and they were plucking on this cherry which was underneath that plant, which is called coffea. That's the name of the plant where the cherry, where the cherry grows. It usually grows up to 15... 15 meters sort of a thing, not more than that. Uh, it needs to grow on a higher altitude. You know, it needs a lot of um, beautiful weather. As far as possible, decent oxygen. But at the same time, 
the more higher you go, the lesser the coffee beans get the oxygen. So what essentially happening is that is there's a lot of chemical reaction which happens within it. Which so is to simply put it, it's photosynthesis, but from a very chemical perspective where there's some other things happening within the coffee. So once they're grown, there are two ways of primary, two ways of washing them or rather processing them, which is washed and natural. Natural means, again, as it sounds, when the cherries are plucked, they're just left out on a, on a cherry bed where they're allowed to age on its own. So, you know, they usually take from, from 10 days to 20 days to 30 days, depending on how the farmer wants. And, and these farmers, we consider them to be artisans because, you know, they're as good as or as peculiar as to how and what kind of coffee flavor or profile they want to turn it out of it. In, in that sense, uh, once the coffee is harvested, uh, processed into these different ways, washed meanings, you know, the, the, the pulp is removed, the coffee is washed out, and, and then that gives you a little more of a floral note, or rather a more uh, acidity uh, is more on those washed uh, coffee beans as compared to the natural ones. The natural ones are more sweeter, they're densely body, they're a little more... Uh, is, is my water ready? Is, is, and, and the more higher you go, the more floor. So there's two major reasons, again, to grow coffee. One is, you know, the, the coffee belt, which is between the Cape of uh, Capricorn and Cancer, which is essentially, we call it the coffee belt. It's more like towards the equator, where they have perhaps the finest uh, weather conditions to grow them. So most of these coffee growing regions are in Africa, in that side of the hemisphere, and in this side of the hemisphere, it's Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, uh, where there are lower altitudes, but they usually grow a lot of um, uh, robusta coffees because it's more labor intensive. They have easy labor available as compared to any other places that's why America doesn't grow coffee, obviously because they don't have a lot of mountains anyway, and they're not, they don't have a lot of labor over there anyway, but they're hardcore coffee drinkers. But then comes these areas where, you know, there's a lot of uh, cafes started popping up. So back in the days before cafes came into existence during the Second World War, there's an interesting story again with that, is that during these times when uh, they were not allowed, there was no freedom of speech, especially in Europe, in Hitler's Raj, and uh, they wanted to do something with, either they wanted to, and, and they were more, you know, mostly these houses in, in, in Europe, they had bunkers. They had uh, areas where they used to go, sit, you know, strategize things, how they want to deal with this guy. And in, 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 that, uh, in that process, they started, the wives started making these drink, which they discovered initially in the 15th or the 16th century and they wanted them to keep them away because the next day morning they had to go back to work or rather they were in army or something to do whatever. But the, the night was the only time when they had. And even the monks used to drink these coffee when uh, they wanted to have their elongated sessions of prayers. And then it came from Yemen to the Middle East and then it went to Europe, uh, made London as their house and then it spread across the whole, uh, sometime in 17th century, that's, that's when the coffee started becoming really popular. So then we have three waves of coffee, essentially, which we call it in our world. The first wave is where the army use, the soldiers were given this packaged coffee, uh, which they could take it on the battlefield to keep them awake, give them energy, because, you know, there's a lot of caffeine content in it. And that's when a lot of... Um, packaged coffee came into existence. So that's, that's the commercial coffee era of, of uh, uh, the history side of it. Then came the second version when Starbucks opened its first uh, store in, in, in uh, Pike Street. And, and um, so the idea of cafes, which are more on a larger scale, you know, where they made it something which was very, it was more like a QSR model where everything was similar they had set patterns, they had procedures, they had everything laid down in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a spreadsheet where they used to do only this amount of water versus this amount of coffee versus this, which we still do, but we take it to another level, which is, when I say we, meaning we're on the third wave, which is currently what we're sitting on. 
So from second wave where you know there was a lot of Starbucks, now in India if, if to uh, regulate or populate with this is cafe coffee days, which they use a lot of generic coffee, which is not uh, obviously they use a lot of robusta coffee. They're not bad coffee, but it's just taken as a drink. And I personally think coffee is so much more than a beverage. It's extremely to me it's very personal. You know, for someone it's the first date is is, is on a coffee date, you know, the first time you sign a deal is, especially in Europe, is when you sit down in a cafe and drink coffee and, and do things around it. So, you know, there's breakups happened on coffee. There's so many things which, and, and, you know, that's for the other people. I see coffee myself when I'm introspecting myself. You know, a lot of people, um, there's a lot of people who come into our cafe, they bring a book. We have, give a lot of books ourselves. But it's essentially their time to spend with themselves. And coffee is an agent. Or rather, it's, it's a sleeping partner in your life, which you never take notice of. It's like a spare wheel in a car. You only find that when you're in trouble. Otherwise, it's just lying around. It's essentially, I even like to relate that with God. You know, we think God is a spare wheel as well, to a large extent. We find Him when we're in trouble. Anyway, coming back to coffee. So, it's my way of... Meditating. I, f I actually find it very meditating when I'm making coffee, when I'm brewing coffee. It's, it's very calming down. It's, it's, it's a space or a zone where it allows me to talk to myself. It allows me to do a lot of things which I haven't been doing or rather want to do. So the two spectrums of it. One is a coffee is actually an agent which helps you spend time with other people. But at the same time, it also helps you spend time with yourself. And then obviously, you know, it helps in a lot of economy. It's the second largest... I don't know if you know about it. It's the second largest traded commodity after crude oil. I'm not joking. It's genuinely the second largest commodity after crude oil, which is traded in the global financial market. And that's when we come to the third wave, where a few bunch of very fancy coffee people, especially you know, with a lot of tattoos in their hands and uh, big ponies and unruly hair or other... Um, you know, a lot of glasses and, and fancy things. They're mostly, they're, they're, they're largely, it started off in Europe where they were not happy with a, a typical coffee. You know, they didn't, they didn't feel like uh, they were doing justice to, and, and, and they thought it was more than a beverage. It was more like a special drink, like, you know, how we consider wine. Um, you know, there's, there's way of describing wine. There's way of finding out what's going on with, the acidity, the body of the wine, the oxygen. I don't know how it does because I don't drink, so I wouldn't know. But maybe that's one of the main reasons why I actually got into coffee as well, because I don't drink. <laughs> but essentially, it's, it's, if, you, if you want to make it, it's a very complex drink as well. It's something, I don't know if, if, um, if you've realized, it's, it's more than just a drink in, its, in itself when you actually drink it without milk. So I don't know if, does anyone drink coffee without milk? Anyone? Like pure black? Okay, interesting. That's even better. So the first time when I was in Paris, when I ordered a cup of coffee, traditionally how when my mom and dad... Actually, my mom never drank coffee. My dad typically drank a Nescafe. And I always thought that I wanted to... And sits in the morning with his newspaper in his hand. And I always wanted to fit into those shoes. So that was my first memory of, of being enjoying coffee in that perspective. And in so many ways... I was actually going to be able to do that, you know, because it's the first time I was a little kid, 16-year-old kid, on your own, in a completely alien city. The interesting thing is, a lot of my friends then gradually, not at 16, but when I started traveling for work, and my love for the cafes came in, is that a lot of my friends said that to me, if you're the first idiot who comes to European land or comes to America and comes, comes up with a list of cafes, unless... You know, there's a lot of idiots. People usually come with a list of strip clubs they want to go to. <laughs> You're the first guy who comes with a list of cafes you want to go to. And, and then now they actually understand it, that, you know, you're not satisfied with a simple cup of coffee, which is with milk. Because the moment you put milk in your coffee, it's nothing bad with it, but it doesn't bring out the actual flavors of what the coffee is and how the aroma is going to taste like. So what I'm doing right now, there's obviously different ways of brewing coffee. There's probably 12, 12 of them. I could only bring French press because I was scared to bring my siphon. If anything would happen, 
I'd probably, I'd probably have to do something with myself. So what I'm doing right now is, is, is making French press where this is, this is a brewing process where um, it's called full immersion. So what is going to happen is, is I'm going to pour 200 degrees of hot water uh, with 22 grams. I don't know if someone wants to come see, have a look, you can do that. There's a lot of permutation and combination when, when it comes to doing, come please, please. So what I'm doing is, is I'm going to pour 23 ml of coffee. Anyone else wants to come? If you, whatever. I think I'm going to run out of my time. So first I put 23 grams of coffee and then I'm going to pour 300 ml of water at different stages. Why am I doing this is because, especially in circles, is because for the first 15 seconds what's happening right now, it's, it's blooming. Essentially, coffee swash is it. So all the carbon dioxide is trying to get out. Uh, obviously, it's got a lot of, that's why there's a lot of bubbles. So this is what you see essentially when you open a bottle of coke. So, this is what's going to happen for a little, uh, 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 10 seconds and then I'm going to pour another remaining amount of water, which is ideally 300 ml of water. I would have been ideally very picky and precise. Now once I'm done with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it brew for three and a half minutes. And why do I do that is because if it's full immersion essentially means the coffee's got a lot of time to spend with water. So as against an espresso machine where ideally we shouldn't let it brew for more than 27 seconds. We pull a shot. It's more of a pressure based machine where, where we put nine uh, pressure, nine bars of pressure to pull a espresso shot. As against this guy where the coffee is going to sit for more than three, three and a half minutes. So first 30 seconds is going to allow the sweetness of the coffee to come out, depending on obviously which coffee it is, where am I getting it from, how is it washed. So it's very technical in that perspective. And then the last 60 seconds, is it's, it's, it's where the actual aromas of the coffee is going to come out. So once we do that, this is full immersion, then there's another one which is pour over, where coffee essentially drips down. It doesn't stay a longer period of time with the coffee. So it's only going to take the readily available characteristics of the coffee at that point in time. So once the coffee is harvested, it can stay for a little while. But then once you roast it, it's probably at its best to consume within seven to eight days after roasting it. What happens in these second wave rather cafes, which we essentially go to, and there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I personally find it wrong, but there's still coffee in my opinion. It's a living thing. Coffee is a living thing. The more older it gets, it starts losing its aroma, it starts losing its flavors, and everything else according to it. And then I have these two interesting glasses, they're called double wall glasses. And this is where the geeky side of it comes into the, in, into the picture. Why do we have double, gloss, double, glass, double wall glasses? Is because I don't want my hand temperature to hamper the coffee temperature. And ideally in our houses, especially in, in this side of the world, we're, we're traditionally used to drinking piping hot coffees. It's never meant to be like that because, you know, burning out everything which is essentially in their coffee. The best time to have, or rather the best temperature to have it is between 125 degrees, 275. The more it goes, you're just drinking black substance, which doesn't have anything in it, just a lot of caffeine in it. So, and there's also, so if you see, I don't know, this is essentially... There's a lot of body in it. It's, it's a lot more thicker than what you would see. It's almost like a milk-like texture. And the way we drink, the way we're trained to drink coffee in the first time, rather when we use the word cupping, is that you first smell the beans, smell the coffee or the brew, because that's the first five to seven seconds is when it's going to tell you if it's floral, if it's sweet, if it's more traditional in terms of it, if it's... If it's got the honey note texture, if it's got the stone. So, yeah, these fancy words, I've considered them to be a fad, but then the more I started studying them, I found them to be a little more interesting in terms of they're actually there for the reason. So, I don't know if you've. I, we probably need more cups for other people to try it, but if, if, if you're okay to yeah. try from the same cup, and then you slurp it actually. So, the best way to do is. There's a big slurp. Chai can be, 
and there's again a reason to do that. Um, you know, I used to find it really funny when my my friends used to see me doing that. But the reason why we do that is because uh, if you want to try it, the oxygen has to go all the way to the back of your jaws, where are essentially the taste buds are there. So if you think about it, it's more. What kind of does it give you a bitter taste? Does it is it is it really pungent? Is it bitter? So these ones are from Ethiopia, yeah. and they're more towards the sweeter side of the coffee. So this has a lot of aftertaste. So once you drink coffee, it's going to stay with you for a little while. And this is essentially where the caffeine level is pretty low because they're obviously Arabica coffee. And there's so much more to the world. I've already run out of my time a long time ago. But my main aim is to, the reason why we started studying coffee is because, you know, we want to start. I, I really think we should drink some beautiful coffee, not only Nescafe. Obviously, it's much more easier. It's, it's packaged drinking coffee. But if you can, the next time when you're in different cities, try finding these specialty cafes if you're traveling abroad. Now there are specialty cafes in Bombay. There are specialty cafes in Ahmedabad. In Bangalore, is probably the hub of beautiful cafes in our country. And if you're in Rajkot, you can come, and come into our cafe as well. And, you know, I'll try to make sure that I can make you try some good coffee. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.